All right, hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be showing you something really cool that I've been working on. It's an update for my modular workspaces product, which is actually the newest add-on I've released. It's intended to help you speed up your startup workflow in Blender in a way where you can just drag and drop in collection assets from the asset browser and just unpack them with one button press. So they're all nicely organized for you in the outliner and ready for you to get working. Over the last week or so, I've been working on a new character display update, which basically provides a collection of handcrafted, really, really nice looking lighting templates that you can throw any of your characters into and immediately get really cool looking results. As well as that, there's also been a couple of updates to the add-on side of it. Rather importantly, whereas before to get the content for the asset browser, there was just one blend file uploaded for you to download. Now I've also got the option of a zipped up folder, which is basically an entire asset library, meaning that if you extract that folder and then go to edit preferences, file paths, and add it to your asset libraries, it will also include all of the categories I've created for the different types of content in the add-on, meaning that the content will be pre-organized in a way that I've intended so it should be easier for you to access and to understand. Before we get into it and I show you how you can make these wonderful looking results, I just want to say thank you for the support on the previous community roundup videos. I've been very happy that like so many people have been enjoying them and I will definitely continue to do them. I have another one in the research and planning phase but because I've just finished this update I need to get it out there and show people. So let's jump into Blender and I'm in the slightly new version of the startup file which is also included in the package. There are a few changes from the other startup file. First of all in the default world nodes down here everything has been set to zero and black so it's basically a completely clean slate in the 3d view meaning that it's ready for us to drag stuff in now i'm going to go through this bit quickly the first time let's say i have a character i'm going to take the wanderer character from daniel bystead's blender demo you can find this demo on the blender website i'll show like a link on the page it's a really cool model you can see here very sci-fi looks like something you might find in the destiny series or something like that so let's say we've got a character model like this and i add like you know a basic point light and maybe i'm new to lighting in blender and i'm thinking well let me just you know adjust these lights a bit and then you know copy things around and it kind of looks interesting but it's not great you know I want something more impactful well this is why I've done this new update for modular workspaces if I go to the modular workspaces asset library then down to the character display section you'll find a bunch of these colorful looking icons I'll show you how this works quickly then I'll explain it so watch this firebrand volume node to the volume drag in the firebrand collection selected only unpack choose the profile camera and there we go add a bit of denoising and we have a professional lighting setup for the character let me expand this so we can enjoy it a bit more not only do we have a professional lighting setup we can also very easily adjust it so we can take a look at the volume node here which is basically for your atmospherics but there are some extra things as well for example there's like a complex volume gradient going from the bottom of the scene leading upwards which gives you that kind of extra glow around the base we can adjust that very easily as well so like we can change all the colors increase the presence of the volume to have have it like creep up the character let's let that resolve a bit each of these presets has what I call like an energy object which is basically why we're getting this under lighting by the legs on the character we can totally disable that if you just disable the energy object there energy firebrand and I've balanced everything so like the lighting styles still look perfectly fine and you can get good results even if you disable these different elements so they're all really well balanced as you can see under the cameras collection there are three preset camera positions these are the same for every one of the presets so basically you can choose what one is your favorite so there's a pose one here which is more cinematic let me turn off the gradient volume turn the energy back on maybe I'll go in and change the color of this to something a bit more I don't know pale blue and that looks kind of cool one thing you'll notice about the presets is that there is some extra artistic effort that's gone into it because there are these glyphs behind the character so I sketched these out manually so let's take a look at some other presets the uh, noir one which is just like a black and white slash grayscale thing is kind of cool so let's bring that in and go to the profile so noir is like your quintessential black and white display very stylish but quite minimal on the color side of things again like i said we can enable and disable this energy source and the lighting is still balanced and it will look fantastic from every angle let's take a look at the close-up camera which i've actually named wrong so that should be called close noir we also don't need the world volume. If we disable that, it will still look wonderful as well. All of these presets have like these kind of particle elements, which are easily adjustable. You can see kind of floating around there. So it gives it a bit of a moonlight vibe in this case. Once again, we don't need the volume gradient, but I think it adds some nice atmospheric, especially if you add the energy back again, because it then filters through that space. You can also enable and disable these background glyphs 
and you can quite easily change their opacity. So if you wanted to get a bit stylish and kind of add your own effects behind them, that's fine. The whole point of these presets is that everything is easily adjustable, including and especially the lighting. You can see there's a naming convention for the lights. So light area top noir, light point top noir. So you can easily see what lights they are just by taking a look at their name. So both of these are top lights in this case because the lighting is quite limited in this. If we take a look at the light settings, you can easily increase, decrease them, change the colors, etc. Not that you would want to in this particular preset. Let's take a look at a different preset that's quite styled. We'll go for the cool stick one. So let's add that world volume and quickly unpack that. Taking a look at the profile camera. So cool stick is more of a fun kind of acidic one. If you imagine like video game characters that, you know, deal in like acid type stuff. That's what I was kind of imagining for this one, meaning that the particles are a bit stronger, the colors are more vibrant. And also in this case, we have some of these like splatter background image textures, which I'm just overemphasizing their alpha value at the moment just to show them more. But basically these have all been set up. So if you want to add some extra texture detail to kind of assist in that rendering process, you can. For the particles, there are geometry nodes trees, basically distributing the points inside of a volume. Some of them are just points. Some of them are actual instance objects. In this case, we have an object called Ember and we can change the color of that here. I've got a color amp set up so the different particles that are scattered around actually have random color to them so either yellow or green which kind of fits with that caustic style so if i increase the emission strength they'll be like really obviously present there so you can adjust the nodes however you like let's take a look at a different preset one that's more subtle is the seabed one so yeah this one's been inspired by kind of like underwater styles this one's quite a beautiful blue one with a stronger volume to let the light filter for it more again going back to the glyphs behind the characters here i try to do them in a way that kind of fits the theme so this one's got more of like a wavy vibe to it let's take a look from the camera perspective because it's all three dimensional here in terms of like the volumes you can totally move the camera around and readjust it to get like any kind of visual you like so maybe i think i don't like the default camera positions but i want to get something else here maybe i like the character in this particular pose and i want to do something a bit stylish you know in my traditional old epoch style i might do something a bit funky with a mission like this you know make a little curve object there make a copy of the emissive seabed object and you know start doing artwork in this kind of way basically showing that all of these pre sets are like template starting points. They've been designed in a way that they look good from the get-go and you could totally use them just as they are for your own artwork but all of the elements are there. They are organized and easily discoverable as soon as you unpack them with the modular workspaces add-on. And yeah it's basically just a cheat code I suppose. A way of jumping to a really cool starting point for character renders. Let's take a look at another one. One of my favorite presets. I like the Muertos preset because this one's quite vibrant and it's inspired by the Mexican Day of the Dead celebration which I really like the style for. So it's a lot of white, blacks and then vibrant colors kind of surrounding that. And I tried to capture that in this preset. So if I go to like the pose here, you can see that in this case, we have the whites, we have some vibrant colors, and we even have like the colorful particles in the background. One note I will make about the particles though, is that there is a bit of a bug with collection instances at the moment in Blender. I haven't written a report for this yet, but basically if you have an object which has a geometry nodes tree on it and you're scattering points, in this case, I'm doing it in a custom distribute points in volume node. If that's part of a collection asset and you take it into another blend file, when you unpack it, for some reason, if you don't realize the instances, it will copy that object. So it will duplicate it for every generated instance inside of the geometry nodes tree. And then every new version of that object will also have a copy of the geometry nodes tree on it. It's a bug, but it only happens the first time you unpack it. And it's something to do with like the operation, make instances real from like control A here, make instances real when you're basically trying to unpack a collection asset. But the only way to kind of stop that from happening was to put a realize instances node in the geometry nodes tree for these particles. But if we bypass this after it's imported, you'll notice that the randomization for the color of the particle starts working again. So that's just one thing to note is that in this version, there's a realize instances node in the particle system to kind of avoid that little bug, but you can totally Totally just bypass it by plugging the instance back to the geometry. See, so yeah, I really like this preset. It's quite creative with the color choices. I think studying how these presets are created will also help you learn a bit more about how to create your own interesting lighting setups. For example, there's one particular tip I can give you. There's a specific combination of point and area lights I've been using here to get these really nice fall offs of light across a character. Basically, it involves having an area light above and then having a point light just below. And it's so you have like a sharper fall off from the point light on the top of the character and then you have a softer, longer fall off from the area light from above. And something about that just looks fantastic. So if you want to see how I've laid that out and how I balance these values, then you can always pick up the product and take a look for yourself. So this is all available now. If this video is now up on YouTube, then the update should be available. If you have a previous version of modular workspaces installed, in particular, I mean the add-on side of it, then I would recommend you update that now. And like I said, I have added a new file to the package, which is a compressed zip folder, which is an entire asset library. So maybe I'll explain that a bit 
bit more. But before we do, if you've been enjoying this video or if you like the content I make, not just these kinds of product things, but also all the other videos on the channel, the community roundups, news videos, tips videos, etc., then remember to subscribe and maybe ring the notification bell so you can stay informed, because all of that does definitely really help. So let's talk a bit about asset libraries in Blender, because when I've heard from people that have been using this product and installing it, it's the asset library part of it which really confuses people. That's because it's quite a new feature. Some people have tried to take like the asset library blend file and try to install that as an add-on and they get really confused and I'm like no 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 don't do that read the wiki I've got like a little wiki documentation page you don't install blend files so I have two asset libraries here right I've got my underscore asset library and then I've got my modular workspaces library if I go to my edit preferences and under file paths you can see this here asset library is the underscore asset library one and my modular workspaces is the modular workspaces one now when you have an asset library in blender which is essentially just a folder if you create categories in the asset browser and then drag your different assets into those categories what's going to happen is blender is going to generate a text file okay so taking a look in these two asset library folders you'll notice that we have blend files here we have folders containing blend files but at the root of every asset library folder there is a text file blender underscore assets dot cat or cats why not dogs anyway so if we double click on this, we can see that the text file basically contains a description of the different categories. If we ignore all of this flavorful alphanumeric data, you'll see materials, 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 afterglow materials, blah, 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 blah. This is basically describing the categories and the blend files for the content that goes into it. So beforehand with this product, I was just giving you a blend file, modular workspaces library, which contains all the assets, but it doesn't contain the categories because it's just a blend file. You can just throw it into any one of your asset library folders you like, and then you would manually grab the assets in the browser, create your own categories and drag them into it to organize it how you like. So I wanted to subvert that process in this version by giving you a zipped folder which will contain the modular workspaces library folder and if you extract this you'll notice it has not just the blend file but also the text file. Now I haven't tried this before but hopefully if you take that folder put it anywhere on your computer and then add it to your edit preferences file paths then it should preserve the categories and if it doesn't then I'll have to find a way to make that work. So yeah I don't think we've had a look at all the presets maybe we should take a look at a couple more. Have you done Desolate? No, I don't think so. Okay, so this is a bit more Dune inspired, you know, the new Denis Villeneuve film. So let me take the Desolate volume and then unpack this preset. Let's take a look at the profile. So this one is a lot more kind of like desert vibe and focused. This one's also got like quite a wavy vibe to it. I was thinking more like kind of Bedouin tents and also like sand dunes kind of waving in and out. Color palette's quite limited. Again, we have the toggleable energy object. If you disable that, we get the kind of more musty, dense atmospheric vibe. And like I said, especially again, if we click on the volume gradient object and go to the shader nodes, we can adjust this color ramp here to increase the density of the creeping volume from the ground upwards. So if you want to make your character look like they're in the middle of a sandstorm, that's super, super easy to do with this preset. It's just a matter of playing with the values. And again, of course, we also have the separate density volume so we can put it to a point where we can barely see them through that but i think that's cool if you want to go for the sandstorm effect and again we have the splatter image planes these ones are quite unique from the other ones because in this case they are darker than the world volume which makes it look more dirty so if i increase the alpha on these then if we let it resolve more you can start to see some of that dirt effect kind of creeping up in the background there and along the left side the pose camera again available in every template is lower down to the ground which means that it's actually kind of existing inside of that rising volume layer which means things are going to be a bit dark around that camera because we're looking through more of the volume but again that gives you some really interesting cinematic type visuals then let's see what happens if we enable the energy again we're getting more light scattering through but it's a lot more difficult because the volume is so strong now so let's take a look at another one okay the evil preset this one is inspired by the sith so it's more of like a star warsian type of preset so here we go more of like red and white the ground volume is kind of a lot tighter and the whole thing's just kind of feeling a bit sharper because there's less volume going on. You can almost imagine it like a kind of volcanic world where your character is standing on rocks. That's another thing as well because like I said these are easy to edit and you can basically use them as like template starting points. If you had any like I don't know quicksaw rock objects or any other assets of your own you can just add them to this and improve it. Use this as a starting point for your artwork. You know do whatever you want with it to create some cool visuals. I like the close-up one for the evil preset because I can just imagine and again like a character here with a red lightsaber and this creeping evil glyph behind them. I just think it's all quite cinematic. There is one more preset to show you as well. This one is a synth wave inspired one. So expect a lot of pinks and purples. Put the synth volume on and 
unpack this one. This is a really pretty one. It's definitely much more my style. If you know historically, I quite like my blues, purples, emissive stuff, all of that. The glyph behind is a lot more, you know, straight on the lines. I've tried to make it as visually stimulating as I can. One of the fun things about this project was that I felt like I could really go a bit deeper into exploring like an art direction behind things. Like I said, all these glyphs are custom for each of the templates. So I really tried to make them each feel like they had a character of some kind, which I feel like is more personal than just like slapping different lines together and thinking, oh yeah, that looks kind of useful. Like it gives them all an identity. I also tried, as I explained, to make it as useful as possible inside of the outliner. So everything is named really well. Modular workspaces automatically unpacks things into its own collections. And also, as you may have noticed throughout the video, like we have these toggleable options to customize the unpacking functionality. Earlier on, I enabled selected only to make sure that it didn't unpack the character model while it was automatically unpacking and organizing the rest of the content. So I'm really happy with this tool. Like I find it really useful and hopefully you will as well. This update is free, of course, for people that already own the product. And a lot of people picked it up on the Black Friday sale that actually ended recently. It was 50% off. So if you picked it up during that, then well done. You got it cheap and you have a fancy new update. So if you made it this far through the video, put a light bulb emoji in the comments so I can see who you are. If you don't know how to do that on desktop, then on Windows, if you press the Windows key and the period key, it will bring up an emoji keyboard. I always like seeing your emojis because I recognize certain people in the comments and it helps me to appreciate you more as well. You can also sign up to my Patreon to get your name on this Hall of Patrons artwork and to support all of my projects. Thank you for watching everyone. I've been a bit slow with updating products, so it's quite fun to you know jump in and do something a bit creative again. I'll have more videos for you very soon and like I said I'm preparing a new community roundup video so if you have any suggestions for like any blender related content that's inspired you recently then I'm all ears. Speaking of which you should definitely check out the recent ones as well. The last two videos on the channel were community roundups and there was some fantastic stuff in there and if you didn't already know I've set up a official playlist on this channel so you can easily keep track of all the recommendations. So thanks for watching everyone have a fantastic day and I'll see you next time. Oh, and if you want to get your hands on a uh, little doodle thing, they're not available yet, but I've been like obsessed with doing these little doodle drawings. I call them my attention deficit series. The whole point about them is they help me focus while I'm working. And on the back of them, there are notes of what I was trying to do at the time. So they're basically like a timeline record of things which I've been trying to work on. And I might make them available as merch. They're all like completely unique. They have my signature, they have notes, like to explain the context of it. So I don't know, I'm thinking about it. Depends if anyone wants them. They're all like different styles. All right, stay safe, everyone. I'll see you next time.